And so let's look at what they gave us. Velocity of particle P, differentiable, so everything's good. Time is in seconds. Velocity is in feet per second. This is already feet per second, um, and everything is shown in the table. When you are given a table, you want to be like, yes. You can only get up to so much trouble with these numbers. Like, you can't do anything except work with these numbers. That's your whole world. That's all you've got. So no matter what happens, everything that you need is right there. All right. So what is letter A asking for? Rate of change. So we're approximating. And rate of change means slope. Okay. Don't be too proud to write out the points. All right. For a slope at three, three is in between two and five. You would want to use two comma negative eight and five comma negative four. And then you would set it up negative four plus eight over five minus two. That went okay. Now it does say indicate units of measure. This is in feet per second. So if we did a rate of that, feet per second squared or feet per second per second. Now that is usually only worth one just for the answer in units, but so you would either get it or not, but I mean, you didn't really do much there. So, you know, that's fair. All right, letter B, interpret the meaning of that. Now I would actually simplify that down for this one to see what we've got. The numerator would be four and the denominator would be three. So is four thirds a positive number or a negative number? Positive which means velocity is increasing four thirds feet per second squared. And you have to say one other thing to get the point, which is at perfect time, three seconds. Do you have another class like physics that hammers that hard on you guys? Cause you guys have been excellent on that this year. Okay. And you've just done, done a great job with it. So you have to say at whatever time it is you're talking about. So positive means increasing, negative means decreasing. So velocity is increasing four thirds, which is what this simplifies down to feet per second squared at time three seconds. Good news is that's usually only worth one as well. So if you didn't get it, you'd only be out one point. All right, letter C, justify why there must be a time. And it says T equals C. That just means T is something from two to five. So somewhere in between here where the velocity is negative five. Negative five is what? In between. So what theorem are we using? In between. <laughs> What's it called for in between? <laughs> the the oh, in between oh, theorem. Intermediate, intermediate oh. value theorem. Right. There we go. I've, I've pulled that out of you. All right. So we're going to say since velocity is what? Since velocity is differentiable, it is continuous. And then you have to, in some capacity, say that, what was it, negative five is in between these other values. So I'm going to say uh, f of two, or I'm sorry, not f of two, v of two, which is negative eight, is smaller than negative five, which is smaller than negative four, which is the other one. Now I wrote that out with a whole bunch of symbols. Negative five is in between negative eight and negative four, which are these two values. You could do that in words as well, like write a little sentence that basically says that. Um, and then once all that's true, do you remember how you just repeat the prompt back? Okay, so we would say, there must be a time, blah, blah, blah. Like you're literally just gonna recopy this, okay? There must be, if you're annoyed, that's fine. You can rewrite what's there. Anyone can just recopy it. There must be a time, T equals C, uh, on two smaller than T, or C, smaller than five, uh, when velocity is negative five, feet per second squared. So I kind of abbreviated and left some of it out, but you know, that's the whole thing. So you need to mention that it's continuous because it's differentiable, it's continuous. Five is in between the other things and then just repeat the prompt back. Ooh, by intermediate value theorem. I think they'll still give it to you if you don't put that, but it's always good to mention the theorem that you use. Thank you. I think you guys got the whole way through that one. That was good. Did you get the whole way through that one too? That was good. Oh, okay. Well, I would have believed you if you said yes. 
All right, what are we on? D? Yes. All right, use a right ream on sum. Everyone should have gotten this one, okay? What's the length of your first sub interval? All right, two, and you're gonna multiply that by negative eight, the number on the right, plus, and then what comes next? Three times negative four, and then, and then do nothing. That's usually worth two points. They usually make it one for like the format of it, like something times something plus something times something plus something times something. And then the second point is that you use the numbers on the right, All right? All right, this is the one that's actually like from this unit. Free response pull from like all over all the curriculum, but this is the one that's actually from this unit. You would let u equal the insides, one third t plus two. What is du then? One third dt, you're gonna adjust it with a three. Did we get there okay? Yep. All right, then I'm happy, all right? So three goes out front, du goes at the end. What's still there is v prime of u, and you have to adjust the boundaries. So if you plug in nine to this, what do you get? A third times nine plus two. It's five, good. And if you plug in zero to this, you get to, oh my gosh, those are both on the table. They have to be because that's all they gave you. Now your antiderivative of V prime is what? Just V, right? Yeah. You're doing an antiderivative, so just unprime it, all right? Such that two to five, and then you're gonna do upper boundary minus lower boundary. So what is V of five? Well, go back to your table. What's your velocity at five? Negative four, oh, but times three. So negative 12, good. And then plug in your lower boundary, velocity at two, negative eight times three is negative 24. And you would just leave this alone. I believe that that's three points. I think it's a point for doing the substitution, a point for the antiderivative, and then a point for the answer. So I think that's worth three, which I actually really like because I think you get all three of it. All right, how are we doing so far? Or did anyone get the whole way through that one? I think, oh, nice. I think you did too. Did you have that? All right, letter F. The position of a second particle Q so we're not using the table anymore. They're introducing something new, it's particle Q, can be modeled by a twice differentiable function, which they're calling H. Why they wouldn't call it Q is beyond me, but anyway, H of two is one, H prime of two is negative three, H prime prime of two is negative seven. Speeding up or slowing down, speed increasing or decreasing? We would say speed is increasing at time two, because why, and you can't say they, but I know what you mean, so you would have to say h prime of two and h prime prime of two are the same sign. I read through, and I always read through the scoring guidelines just so I can tell you guys this. Which piece of information did they give you that you don't need? Do you see how they gave you this one? Yeah. It said in the scoring guidelines, because you only need these two. It said if you mentioned that one, they wouldn't give it to you because you're using something that you weren't supposed to use, which I find kind of evil, but I'm just here to tell you that's what they said. Well, but that doesn't have anything to do with speeding up or slowing down. It's just the first and second derivative. So, and I believe that's worth two, like one for the saying that it's increasing and one for the reason, but I don't remember. It's either one or two. All right, and then G. Everyone should have gotten G. G is not hard, all right? You need a point and a slope, and didn't they give you the whole point? Yeah, they gave us the point. yeah you don't even have to plug back in. They just gave you that, negative two, one. How would you get the slope? Yeah, plug those into this. All right, so negative two squared is four. Four times three is 12. Minus, all right, we're plugging in one for y, so that would just be seven. So your slope is five. And then what's your answer? 
Good. Y minus one equals five parentheses x plus two. That's it.